All right, it is Friday afternoon at five o'clock, and Eric and I are in the suburban. What is this? This is Louisville. 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 And I know that everybody in the office thinks that going and doing these remote installs is all sexy and fun away from the office, but really, this is what a remote install is. It's just traffic, just traffic from the time we hit the road to the time we get off the road. So, 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 Eric, what, what's what's your favorite part of doing these installs? Favorite part? Yeah. Does the installs have a favorite part? <laughs> Hey, but at least we're not stuck. At least we're moving. Yeah. yeah. Not far. Not far. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll down the window and give give you a sexy view of Louisville. Oh, oh this is interesting. This little canopy dealy. Oh yeah, I suppose I should point, and this is something new for us, is if you look back behind the Suburban, you'll see we have a 12-foot U-Haul trailer this time around. So, so, so not only are we, are we stuck in traffic, uh, going like 20 miles an hour on a highway, but we've got this big thing on our, on our hitch that's sucking up gas faster than, I don't know, what sucks up things fast? An anteater sucking up ants, I guess. Just get, keep up getting gas. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We'll just keep stopping. All right. So this is report number one from our trip to Florida. Okay. Right now we are passing the airport. I don't know if you got a good shot of that or not. But for future reference, if you ever want to do any of these installs at a long location, I would prefer to mail out the hardware and fly out to Florida next time. You know, three hours in a plane beats 15 hours in an SUV any day of the week. So that's just my recommendation for the future. Okay. So Eric and I are going down 65 in Kentucky and we just learned about Gene Snyder because there's a highway named after him. Apparently Gene Snyder was elected um, to government here in Kentucky where he then voted against civil rights and um, when he lost in his original district he moved to another district and won and was re-elected to that office nine times so I guess all you have to do to have a highway named after yourself is to vote against black people who knew all right we're coming up on the exit for Bardstown and we expect there to be a lot of Shakespearean plays here based on that name so maybe sometime we'll come back and see some plays. All right, we, it is now 6.10 p.m. on Friday and we're still on the road. We're about 65 miles away from the border of Kentucky. And um, for those of you who have, who have not been outside of Indiana, these are what would be known as hills. And what happens is over tens of thousands of years, water and wind will erode away at the ground and will transport the earth to other parts of the area. So as a result, you get some areas that are higher than others, and you'll get some areas that are depressed instead. And so if you've never been out to experience hills, I highly encourage you to move out of your comfort zone and take a road trip instead of getting on a plane. I know that's a crazy idea here in the year 2007, but well worth your while. Hit the road. Hey, this is exit 90, which is the exit for Nashville's airport. And Eric and I would just like to reiterate that neither one of us is opposed to flying around the country instead of driving. We just thought we'd make that point one more time. All right, so we are driving past downtown Nashville now. And as you can see, um, if I zoom in here, we get past the trees. We will be at the, like, the Bell South building right there in front of us see the Nashville skyline and um, we're going by a stadium LP field although I'm not really sure who that's the home of um, LP field I still have no idea who the LP field is the home of 24 East yeah 24 East 
Yeah. We're making a transition right now from 65 to 24. And because Eric chooses to print out maps instead of printing out directions, uh, we were actually lucky to have figured it out. But we're good to go now. Once again, this would be a non-issue if we just got on a plane. <laughs> It is about 8.05 p.m. on Friday, and we are just stopping for dinner, and we've decided to stop um, a little bit south of Nashville. Uh, what is this, Smyrna? S-M-Y-R-N-A, exit 66B, and we are gonna stop for dinner at Chili's. All right, it is Friday night. And as you can see, the clock says 10.02 p.m. That's right. Do not try to adjust your screen. It is dark out. And the only sources of light are coming from other people's headlights. So I'm going to turn on the night shot mode. And let's see if the camera can figure out how to focus in. There we go. When it turns the camera, it's, it's black. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying your Friday night, because Eric and I know that we're enjoying our Friday night, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. <Really? laughs> Excellent. All right, so we're going to file this one under things you don't see every day. And this sign coming up on the, the right here says that there's a runaway truck ramp on the left at 1,500 feet. And so if you're a truck and you've lost control, and you're probably on the right-hand side of the road, so if you figured out you've lost control, you need to make it over to the left-hand side over here and, and make your way onto that ramp that we just passed the sign for and that'll put you on a rough grade with the hill that goes back uphill. Because right now we're on a hill that goes steeply downhill. I've gotta say, I'm not sure how that makes me feel. But Eric assures me that in the Alps it's very effective. Yeah, but they're on the right side. <laughs> but they're on the right side. Now, now in Switzerland, are the drivers on the right side of the car or the left side of the car? Left side. Left side, okay. That's a ramp solitaire, but no, they're going this way now. Okay. Yeah. And they have them pretty, uh, they're pretty common there? Oh, yes. Well, there you have it then. Runaway trucks, not uncommon. Still doesn't make me feel very good. Now, if you have a, that's not really steep here. That's just 6%. Uh-huh. If you go 10, 12% uh -huh. down, it's, it's pretty easy for a tractor. The brakes are running hot. So like what kind of angle would be 10%? Like, cause 6% seemed pretty steep to me. So what would 10% be? Steep. <laughs> steep. Steep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> No matter where you go, you can't get too far away from neon lights. Tennessee Fireworks Gift Shop. Lowest prices in the South. Alright, it's Saturday, day two of the road trip. We're back on the road, it's about uh, 8.30 a.m. and we have about an hour, hour and a half of driving. And we should get there right around the time uh, Criminal Records opens. Um, it won't take us very long to take that down with the two of us. And then it's on to Jacksonville, Florida for the install there. So, it depends on how fast you are. Yeah, how, <laughs> how fast I am. <laughs> nice. Okay, well if it depends on how fast I am, then we should be done pretty quickly. <laughs> Alright. 
It is about 9.30 a.m. Welcome to downtown Atlanta, Georgia. I think we're pretty well um, either on or ahead of schedule, so uh, we're going to get down here and find criminal records and find a parking spot and uh, get this kiosk uninstalled and hit the road again. Aren't you jealous you can spend such a nice Saturday morning? Huh? Yeah. I wonder what everybody else is doing on their Saturday. Yeah. Sleeping in, maybe who, having a barbecue. Who, who wants to do that? Yeah, who would want to sleep in or, or relax on a Saturday? <laughs> As you can see here on the left, we have a ton of construction going on. And even on the right, we have some, uh, some construction going on as well. 278, and yep, that's where we want to go. Looks like on the right here we have the offices for Court TV, TNT, TBS, TCM, and Cartoon Network. That's kind of neat. Oh, Turner Broadcasting is here. How about that? Over to the left we have the AT&T building. Which looks like it was pretty tall until that other building next to it got a little taller. Alright, so we just finished getting everything out of criminal records. And I just wanted to show you kind of um, where they're at. If you can see here on the back of the browsing station, we got what looks to be cigarette ashes, possibly. Um, but you can also see on the back of the BTC monitor a nice uh, layer of, of dust and uh, which is also on the screen of the monitor if you can see that um, and on top of the BTC so overall I would say it's probably a lot of goodness that we are now free of, uh, of this particular retailer. Just my two cents. Criminal records, we bid thee adieu to you and you and you. Alright, so it's Scott again. It's Saturday at 10.50 a.m. And we are back on the road to Jacksonville. I would have taken some video of us taking down the, uh, taking down criminal records, but it happened really fast. It was like what, like 15, 20 minutes from when we walked in the door to till, till when we were done? Yep. So, uh, so it went quick, it went easy, and um, once again, a great way to spend your Saturday. <laughs> We are just about to make the merge where 675 and 75 uh, come back together south of Atlanta. And from here, it's on to uh, Jacksonville. All right? Yeah. All right, Scott here again. And we're about 45 miles from the Georgia-Florida border here. And uh, Eric and I just stopped at the nastiest rest stop of the trip so far. Um, it was a BP station owned by, I don't know, because they were Indians? I think so, Indians. Right? Pakistani. And so I go to the bathroom, and I'm standing there, and the fly lands on my foot. And the place just overall was just kind of gross and nasty. Gross. Yeah. Like, it was kind of dirty, and like even some of the bottles in the fridge had dirt and stuff on them. Yeah. So not so much. So what's the name of this town? I don't know. I don't know, but if you're ever 45 miles north of the Florida border, and there's a BP station, just go ahead and skip it and go right for the rest stop instead. Because the rest stop is right there next to it. So that's our two cents and we're sticking to it. Well, here we are in Florida. 
Uh, we just got inside the state line. And where else could you go where there's a whole rest stop dedicated to giving you pamphlets? And giving you orange juice, apparently. So free cup of orange juice? Yeah. Nice. So there you go, Florida. Good for pamphlets and orange juice. All right, welcome to Jacksonville. Um, we're kind of inside the city limits here, and uh, it's four o'clock p.m. So we actually have a good amount of evening left, which is kind of cool. But uh, here we are, safe and sound. All right, so it's Saturday at about eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And Eric and I have just finished up with the install at um, Big Al's Record and Tape. And it went really, really well. They were happy that we showed up today uh, because they really didn't want to open up the store tomorrow anyway. Um, so it went well. The install was really easy. But it actually went a little bit longer than we usually go because they had a lot of questions. And I guess that's a good sign. You know, when they have lots of questions. Everybody seemed really eager to learn the system. And if you didn't know better, you'd swear it was just Georgia's in Florida. Once again, a predominantly African-American uh, um, clientele in, uh, in an area of the city that is kind of uh, low income. If it's dark, you don't go without your gun. <laughs> yeah, I did see, we did see houses with uh, bars on the windows and doors. And the store itself is right next to a uh, makeshift, uh, what was it, sheriff? Sheriff's department. Sheriff's department, yeah. So if nothing else, they're well protected. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go find a hotel now and, uh, and maybe even get some dinner. So that's it for now, and we'll get more back at you later. All right, you know, I just wanna say for the record that people in the South seem to enjoy their, their strip clubs. Um, in Atlanta, we, we passed at least four strip clubs, and here, just in Jacksonville, we've passed three that I've noticed. So apparently the people in the South, you know, no disrespect intended, but they apparently they like their naked women. So there you go. Eric, it's 8.30 at Saturday night, and what are we doing? Driving. Driving. So once again, for everybody who's having a good time, watching the game, or sitting out by the pool, or hanging out with family, just wanted to let you know, we're thinking about you. We wish you were here. All right, so it's Saturday night, 10.40, and Eric and I just got done eating at a little hole in the wall somewhere between Jacksonville and Daytona Beach in the middle of nowhere called the Seafood Shack. And I just had the most amaz amazing plate of king crab legs, and Eric had salmon with a pineapple glaze. Yeah. Phenomenal. So, I don't know where this place is, but you should check it out. Very good. All right, it is, um, what is it now? It's Sunday morning at 12.45 a.m. And Eric is, we've been, we were, first of all, we were pulled over by a cop about 20 minutes ago because the trailer lights were not working. The brake lights were working, but the regular drive lights were not working. Um, and so a cop pulled us over. But we have not found a place to sleep yet tonight, which we're hoping to do in fairly short order. So we pulled over at the Ocean Trillium Suites, where the sign said vacancy, but the office is not open. It closed at 11 o'clock p.m. So we will not be staying here tonight. So we are now, um, once Eric gets this fixed, we're, are all set? Tape. Tape. I don't have tape. Do we have tape? You have tape. Yeah. You've got you've got duct tape, right? Yeah. That's enough. All right. And the lights are working now, as you can uh, see, even though it's not focusing really well. And I don't know how to manually focus. Yay. Where is 
wer ist da? Kein Feind. Okay, it is now Sunday morning about 12.45 a.m. And I just thought um, I would make mention, since I'm just the co-pilot here, not necessarily the pilot, that it um, it's race weekend here in Daytona. Um, and as such, finding a place to stay has become extremely difficult. Eric, do you have any opinion about this? I hate Daytona 500. <laughs> I don't like the trailer. Yes, the trailer has also made it difficult to find a motel because a lot of places just don't have the physical size we need to, to park this thing. But we will prevail. Have no fear. All right, good morning. It is Sunday, and Eric and I are taking the day off. Um, last night, we tried, um, after doing the install at Big Al's, we tried to make, uh, make a run towards um, Daytona. Daytona. Uh, because we wanted to spend today at the beach. And we thought it'd be nice to grab a motel somewhere near the beach and uh, just hang out. It turns out that the Pepsi 400 is in town today. So um, everywhere you went, there was a nice big sign that said, Welcome Race Fans. Um, so that was a big no-go. So uh, well, we were in Daytona until like what? Like 1, 1.30? 1, yeah. 1, 30. One, one thirty. Yeah. And... Um, so then we decided, well, we want to go to Kennedy Space Center. If we couldn't spend the day at the beach, we'd go, we'd go to Cape Canaveral, uh, right? Cocoa Cape, Beach. Cocoa yeah. Beach, right? Look for a motel on the beach. All right, so we get down here to, to, um, to the Space Center, and once again, every freaking hotel <laughs> is filled up. And uh, Eric, when he went down, to, uh, went down to the lobby for breakfast this morning, found a news article. And what did it say? It's a rocket launch today rocket launch today so we we came in totally <laughs> prepared for this trip races and rocket launches we couldn't have asked for a uh, for a busier weekend so now we are going to make a quick stop at um at the walmart super center and um i think we're going to stock up on like some i think we're going to stock up on soda some stuff to drink soda. maybe some snacks some uh, sneakers, yeah. Good stuff. And we are looking for a parking space at the Walmart. Yeah, just park here. Yeah, we fit. <laughs> this has been the story of our weekend so far. So uh, hopefully we'll find something interesting to show you later on today. All right. So if you look up in the distance, you should be able to make out a. Uh, a vacation cruise liner and I don't know how much does the vacation cruise line cost $500 $1,000 $1,500 and just think for $100 a night and driving till 3 in the morning we're in the same place at the same time I think they're crazy <laughs> see all these hotels completely sold out last night these places are ginormous they have hundreds of rooms not a chance of us getting into any one of these things All right, so Eric and I are hanging out at the uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. This is the Gemini rocket, or the capsule rather, barely big enough for two people to sit in. And this is truly uh, an exciting day for me. I've never been here before, and uh, you know what? What little kid? doesn't dream of uh, being an astronaut someday. Alright, so this is the Apollo 11 uh, exhibit. 
What an incredible time in history. Just, uh, you know, we weren't afraid to dream big. And as a result, you know, amazing things like this became possible. How amazing. Well, and I don't know if there's enough light in here to see this. But, let's see here. So the way we're looking at this is, what's closest to us is the headrests. And you see the three of those headrests on the bottom here. And then this should look very familiar to everybody because this would be um, a precursor to um, what everybody saw in Apollo 13, the movie. And you see the, uh, some of the controls and stuff. And you see all the controls that they would be looking at in the movie is actually what we would consider kind of up towards the top there. It's totally amazing. Look at that. Barely enough room for three people to, to fit in there. Wow. That's amazing. Welcome to Orlando, everybody. It's Monday morning, and we are on our way to Revolver to uh, finish the uninstall there, but I thought I'd give you a little uh, little taste of the uh, of the downtown Orlando skyline, just because that's what we've been doing. Once again, lots of construction going on, um, and it's causing uh, traffic to go pretty darn slow. It's just starting to to pick up now. All right. I just wanted to mention real quick that we had an amazing day at Kennedy Space Center yesterday. I wanted to get more video, but my uh, the camera stopped working uh, in the middle of the day because it was just too humid, and uh, I think the tape got too sticky, and so it wouldn't roll. Yeah. You, you should you should use a camera in Florida. Only a camera you bought in Florida. Yeah, like I think this would be the ideal place with all the heat and humidity to get one of those cameras that um, uses a hard drive instead of tape. I think that would be really smart. Um, but we had an amazing day. They had um, an actual Saturn V rocket there um, that was restored to Smithsonian standards. And they had this whole display that was just utterly amazing. You could see every stage and... Um, you saw the command module and the lunar module and how it was all put together. It was just totally amazing. So really, really good yes day yesterday. Um, and then hopefully um, we'll have some time to do some cool stuff today. So that's it for now. Talk to you later. All right. So we just got done uninstalling uh, Revolver um, Entertainment. It used to be a CD warehouse apparently. Um, the store itself was actually fairly clean, and they had a decent amount of, of inventory. Um, but from my point of view, it looked like all the guy does is sit on the phone and, and socialize with people and ask people, like, apparently he spends a lot of his time talking to CD Warehouse people, asking, you know, how well they're doing. And then he spent a lot of time talking about how soft the entertainment market is in general so um, I don't know didn't seem like his heart was really in it or something either way good thing we're out so uh, we're done here and tomorrow it's um, on to HMS host so good stuff all the way around just for everybody's information if you're driving through Orlando it's not the regular police cars you need to worry about it's the unmarked police cars that are brand new Ford Mustangs. So we just passed a silver one. So basically, if you're speeding in Orlando, you have no chance at all. Because they're probably just going to blow by you and then you'll speed up and get behind them. Then they'll just pull you over. Not very nice. Alright, it's us again. It is Monday, about 2.40 p.m. And uh, we just stopped off at the Mall of Florida because um, I wanted to stop at the Apple Store and actually touch an iPhone. Um, so the Apple Store was crazy busy, even for a weekday. 
Um, but the Apple phone was very slick, very cool. Um, it was a little heavier than I thought it would be, but it felt solid. Yeah, it felt solid. Um, and everything worked the way it was supposed to. So um, I don't know if it's worth 600 bucks, but, uh, but it was still very cool. But as you can see, Eric and I are both sporting some new hats that we picked up at this custom hat place. So Eric picked up more of like a fedora kind of cap, and I picked up a baseball cap with some custom embroidery. It says uh, chaoticchristians.com, which is the name of my website, of my podcast. So I picked up one for me and one for the wife. And so, uh, very, very cool. And now it's just on to uh, HMS Host to do some installs. And that's the way that goes. All right, real quick, it's middle of the day, like 3.30 p.m. on Monday, and the hotel we're staying at doesn't have free Wi-Fi, so we're about to go walk into uh, Starbucks, which is nearby, and uh, we're gonna go use their uh, Wi-Fi to, uh, to shoot through some emails and get some work done uh, to make sure that we're still in the loop with everything going on back at DKT. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning. We've just checked out of the hotel and now we're getting ready to head um, grab a quick snack, I think, at like a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. And uh, HMS Host is next on the list. Big day. We have a special enclosure to set up and uh, two kiosks. So, lots to do and we're very excited. Alright, it is. Um what is it? It's Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. It is Tuesday, Tuesday. about 7 o'clock p.m. and we have just finished the install at HMS Host. Um, what's your quick reaction? How'd you feel about it? Uh, yeah, it went well. Yeah, I think so. so. We have to do some improvements for the next enclosure. But all in all, it went well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all kind of felt like um, that the security enclosure, while it works, it really is a lot harder than it needs to be to put together. And um, and they're, they're really, um, I think we, we all probably want to feel a little bit better about its stability and its ability and to, for, for a contractor to set it up. It doesn't look good to build this enclosure in front of the customer. Yeah, I agree with that. That's big. That yeah. Was, uh, let's go back to the road. Okay, that was bad. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, there was definitely um, a little bit of time there where we spent more time scratching our heads than we did actually building anything. But no, overall, it, it, I mean, I've got pictures that I'll put online. Hopefully we'll stay at a hotel tonight with high-speed internet. And I'll post pictures of the install online and uh, send an email so everybody can see what we've been up to around here. Um, but other than that, uh, we are out of here for now, and the next time we have something interesting to say, I'm sure we'll be back. Really quick here, just thought we'd show you what rain looks like from a distance. Um, I don't know if the video is going to turn out well, but if you look under the cloud, like under the main cloud, you should still see like this weird grayishness. Um, and if you can see that, that's actually rain from a distance. How far can I zoom in? Yeah, like if you look under the main cloud there, you should still see some gray. And that is rainfall. We're getting some wicked lightning as well. Yeah, just like some water. Right. And this would be the rain close up. I don't know if you can actually see it. Must be getting really nasty, slowing down all the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> 
So let there be no doubt that Eric and I are willing to risk our lives for DKT. There's, there's a truck about, I don't know what about, 40 or 50 feet in front of us. And uh, you see here in the video that it's hard to even make out the tail lights. Do you our lights on? Lights are on? Okay. This is what my dad would call part of the adventure. Yeah, but just the light rain. The light summer rain. Yeah, uh-huh. I guess for Florida it'd be considered light rain. Yeah. Yeah. That's really heavy. I would say anytime visibility is below 100 feet, that, that's heavy enough for me. I had rain here. Visibility. Six feet? Uh-huh. That's hard. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been in a couple of those kind of rains. Yeah, it's lighting me up a little bit. Uh, we, we only hit the border. Yeah. Borderline. You think most of the rain is west of us? Yep. Yeah. And I don't know if you can see this on the video, but the rain is kind of coming from uh, from west to east. It's coming down at an angle. And I would say it's uh, at least a 45 degree angle the rain is coming down at. So it's almost horizontal, not quite, but 